What's going on guys, Blender Bench here. In this video, I'm gonna give you guys a brief introduction to rigging inside of Blender 3.0 and above. So you're inside of Blender, you have your character created and you wanna make it move. Now, how do you go about doing that? Now, the process is called skinning uh, in the industry and that's basically the process of binding your character's mesh to the skeletal section. So in Blender, it's called armature. So in order to create an armature, which is basically the spinal region or the bones that make the character move, um, we're just gonna press Shift A. First, let's go to the front view. So we're gonna press one on the number pad on the keyboard, press Shift A, and we're gonna go to armature. And quickly, you see we have this pyramid attached to a couple of um, spheres. Now, I'm gonna change the mode so you can see this a little bit easier. Now, we want this to be the first bone, so we can press S to downscale this, press G, then Z to move this up, and we'll start this somewhere around here, around the navel area and pelvic area, right in the middle. And we need to create bones throughout the entire body where it will move. And these spheres act as a pivotal point to um, make the character bend in certain directions. So what I want to do is while we have our bone and armature selected, change the mode from object to edit. And if you select any of these balls here, you can use the move tool to move it around. And I'm going to press control Z to go back. And I just want to bring this down a bit and I'll leave one here and I'll press E to extrude and I'll press Z to constrain it to the Z axis and I'll make one about here. So wherever you want your character to bend is where you want the spheres or ball joints to be. And every character is different, so you can have as many as you'd like. And all, say if you were doing a snake, it wouldn't be the same as a human. So that's also why doing it this way is easier and more um, customizable versus just using um, some type of rigging add-on, you know. So with that being said, let's create a couple more. Press E. And I'll press Z and I'll move this here for the neck. I'll press E one more time, press Z and this is for the head. I'm going to select this one here at the bottom, press E and I'll just bring it out because I want the leg to be able to move around here on this upper thigh area. I'll press E once again, I'll bring this down to the knee area, press E once again, and we're gonna extrude this out to the ankle where that rotates and moves. And I'll press E once again for the lower foot, if we want one there. Now let's press the number three to go to the side view, and you see we have to line these up a little bit better. So let's choose the knee, drag this in this way, right in the middle, Grab this ankle joint, put that right there, and we have the foot, which we can leave there, that looks fine. Change the spinal area. Let's go here. Drag this back a little bit, to be more in the middle. Grab that throat bone here. We're just gonna slide this over and the head is fine where it is. Now let's go back to the front view by pressing the number one on the number pad on the keyboard and let's get a collarbone going. So from this ball joint here, I just wanna press E, extrude, and I'll bring this somewhere around here. And if you want, you can do a collar. It really depends on the character you want and how you want him to move. And this is fine for me. Leave it here for the shoulder rotation area. Press E once again, and we'll bring this down to the elbow. And we'll bring another one out for the wrist. And um, I'll do another one just for the hand. I'm not gonna do fingers, but I'll just leave this here. I'll press number three on the keyboard, on the number pad, so we can line this up a bit better, right? So choose that shoulder, press three. Drag this over to about here. Drag this elbow over here. 
grab that wrist and the hand right there in the middle. We can bring that up a little bit higher. Now, one more thing I think I should bring up. Let me actually go back. Let me fix this a little bit. There you go. And typically I like to use my, uh, I like to model my characters in the T pose, but I grabbed this one just for the example, and he's also in the A pose, which makes it a little bit difficult um, to weight paint this later on, and you'll find out what that is here shortly. So one more thing we need to do is set up a naming convention so we can mirror this uh, skeletal mesh here, which is the armature on the opposite side. And to do that, what you want to do is select the bone here, press F2, and give it a name that's unique, but you want to have the suffix dot L, right? So we'll name this peck dot L, hit enter, we'll name this shoulder, so F2, shoulder dot L, enter, select this one, F2, forearm, dot L, enter. We'll select the last one here, the hand, so we'll F2, hand, dot L, enter. And now what we can do is press A, and it selects all the bones here, the entire armature. And we wanna press F3, and then type in symmetrize and I already have it here so I can just select it and you see now it's mirrored on the opposite edge but notice how we didn't name these thighs so that didn't get mirrored over and that's how you know that the naming convention is really specific in blender so let's control Z to go back before we mirror that and let's just rename these thighs so F2 thigh dot L enter and I'll say F2 leg dot L enter and F2 foot dot L hit enter. Pelvic dot L. And now what we can do is press A and it selects all the bones here, the entire armature. Let's press F3. Symmetrize, there you go. We have the symmetry on both sides, looks great. Now, we need to go about making this move. So if we change the mode from edit mode to pose mode, select a bone, rotate it, nothing happens. Now we need to do the skinning section and that's when you bind the character to the armature. So to do that, you want to go to object mode. So now that we're back in object mode, what I want to do is select the mesh first and then shift select the armature, press control P. And I want to parent this with automatic weights. And now if I go to pose mode and select a bone, now I can move the character by the armature's positioning. And you can also see that where the ball joints are, the character rotates off of that pivot point. So let's change the mode back to regular. And you can see we have a rigged character. And it's just that simple. So hopefully you guys uh, found this video, you know, um, knowledgeable, you guys learned something. And let's say we got some artifacts in this character mesh, or if you wanted to weight paint this yourself and not do the automatic, there's ways to go about doing that as well. And like we learned in Blender, everything is important, so the order matters. So if you select a character first, let's go back into object mode. Let's select a character mesh, and then shift select the armature. Go back to wireframe mode. And we go to object mode, you see we only have three options. But let's select the actual armature first and then select the mesh 
and go to object drop down you see we have more options and now we have the weight paint option and you can see how this works so if I go to wireframe really quick so you can see the armature underneath we can toggle through each bone and see what's affected by pressing control and selecting that bone and very quick you see that we have this uh, color convention going on red orange yellow green and blue and that's just how much an area is affected you know by the actual bone so if you go to this um, thigh bone here hit control and select you see that this area is affected by the bone red being the most intensified then it goes lower to orange then even lower to yellow then green then blue then you see dark blue it is unaffected at all so let's control select another area like the forearm and you see what's affected now there's more menus that you can do if you press N on the keyboard you can bring up the menu and you can go to tools and here you see the weight here so red I told you is 100% so it's one so if I wanted to paint this area to be affected we have that and if you want to erase that and you know you just drag the weight down you see it turns more green and if you bring it all the way down to zero it's going to be blue which is erasing it so for instance you guys saw that these characters move properly with the bones but I want to show you if you did have an effect how it will look so let's go to weight and let's change the forearm to affect um, this torso area so we have that selected let's change the mode from weight back to um, object mode I'm going to select the armature go to pose mode because that's the only way you can actually animate this is in pose mode and you saw that I changed the torso to be affected by this arm and now you see that there's some artifacting going on and some deform issues because this forearm now controls the torso area. And remember to fix that, you want to select the, the armature and then the character and then go to object mode and you can go to weight paint. And then we can just bring the weight down to zero. And we can fix these issues. So let's go back into object mode, select our rig, which is our armature, go to pose mode, and now there's no artifacting. We have a little piece here, which I probably missed, but it's fine because you guys can see how it works a lot better now. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I'll give it a thumbs up, comment you liked it, and share it, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.